Wes, self-driving cars are the future, all right? I don't know, I think in terms of AI, it's gotta be digital. Oh, I disagree. Hey guys, welcome to Goat Tech. How are you feeling today about the debate? So excited, ready to rock. Oh man, so are we, because today's is gonna be all about AI, and which one specifically has more lasting power or even a stronger future? Let's meet our experts. Hey guys, I'm Christiana Silva. I'm a senior tech and culture reporter at Mashable. I am arguing that ChatGPT and other like large language models have the stickiest and strongest future. All right, hi guys. I'm Emily Forlini. I am a senior news and features writer at PC Mag, and I'm going to be arguing that Waymo has more staying power and a more promising future. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot, I think should be the, the format here. I'm so yeah, nervous. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Oh, here we go. I guess Emily's going first. Scissor beats paper, right? Yeah. Let's go for it. That's okay. how it works. Take it away, Emily. Okay, I think Waymo will be around longer and has more staying power than ChatGPT because it has almost no competition. So there's nothing that's even close to Waymo's progress. It's also a very highly regulated and difficult business to break into. So it's not necessarily something that anybody can just come out of the woodwork and start doing. Like ChatGPT, I mean, people are now coding chatbots at home themselves. I feel like they've already been commodified a little bit. There are open source models, whereas something like Waymo is difficult to get into, super practical, you know exactly what it does, drives you from point A to point B, and chatbots are still kind of figuring themselves out. So. At this point, I'm gonna go with Waymo. Great argument, Emily. I will concede that we're talking about the future and I am not a psychic, but I think ChatGPT, it, it represents like a more scalable and a more transformative technological paradigm than Waymo. Waymo's domain, it's really constrained by regulation, by liability, by like the, inherent unpredictability of the physical world, whereas ChatGPT operates in the informational domain where like iteration is really fast, costs are really low, deployment is merely frictionless. So it's far more global than Waymo too. And whether we like it or not, it is already reshaping communication and education and software development and research. And in, in essence, I feel like Waymo is automating transportation, it's so specific, whereas ChatGPT is trying to automate thought. And in the end, the latter is going to permeate through every cognitive industry, and that gives it a greater staying power. All right, let's move on to round two, the takedown round, and let's start with Emily. Okay, I agree that the regulation is a problem, and I'll even give you an argument against me, which is that if there are one or two bad accidents, like Waymo's donezo, like it's very sensitive. But at the same time, they haven't really had any yet. And again, they have no competitors. They're being super cautious on testing. They have the most permits in the most cities, and they're even going abroad to London to test. So at this point, the future's looking very bright. I think for ChatGPT, it's just a little bit lost, you know? And there's also a strong history in tech where the first mover is not necessarily the one that wins. It almost inspires other companies that come after that stick, like Apple is kind of known for that. So I think ChatGPT might fall in that category if it kind of kicks something off, but it might not be the one to finish it. And why doesn't Waymo? Well, there have been some before Waymo actually that failed. So like GM had Cruz, which did have an accident and now it's it's off the roads. Um, the other competitor is Tesla, which you know everyone thinks is winning, but actually only has a small fleet of 10 to 20 cars in Austin, which is one city and Waymo's in five cities. So I feel like there's, I mean, a tiny amount of like kick in the pants that they have to keep going, but they just, they have so much green space and they're doing so well and it's so useful and people love it. So I don't know, I think I think it's very, very promising. I sort of agree, agree that the first is not necessarily the one that has the most sticking power, but I do think that there were a lot of LLMs, long, large language models before ChatGPT. ChatGPT just found the way to make it more useful for individuals. True, but what about open source large language models and small language models? So. First of all, anyone can take ChatGPT's model, which they've partially open sourced and build something like a company could. Actually, that's another point. One thing I'm not sure about chatbots is are they gonna be personal use, which actually is what they're mostly used for, or are they gonna be more of like a business thing and we don't hear about it that much in a hundred years, but people at certain industries are secretly using it all day. I mean, it's just, it's a little more TBD. 
Yeah, well, people will still be using it. They just might be using it quieter. I also, I wonder, you, you mentioned that like, there's no competition for Waymo, but don't we always hear this idea that competition leads to innovation? So it, if it's not being pushed forward, what's the promise that it will still be around? Transportation, cars, like they're just not going anywhere. So it just, I think. Yeah. Unless we start getting more trains. You know, Emily did say cars aren't going anywhere, but I think they are. Yeah, it's a pun. Oh, that's very, <laughs> we're all about puns here at GoTech. Okay, do you want an official, uh, <laughs> you want a thumbs down it? All right, guys, that was a great back and forth. Great takedown, Emily. But now, Christiana, let's see your side of things. So I get what you're saying, and I agree with a lot of your points, but Waymo's achievements in, in, in autonomous driving are admirable, but I, I do feel like you're arguing that something that isn't even that sticky today is going to be sticky in a decade, whereas ChatGPT has already proved its stickiness. Plus, I mean, and you do talk about these challenges, um, but I also think that there are like natural ceilings with Waymo's impact. Like, let's say you're right and tons of people end up using Waymo. At best, millions will use it. Whereas at best for ChatGPT, billions will use it. And so that use case, I just think is so much stronger for ChatGPT. And each Waymo development, which you've talked about, dem or, 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 or demands, so much infrastructure, like sensors and legal clearances and like this extensive real world testing. It's slow and it's an intensive cycle, which it has to be because we're talking about cars that human beings are sitting in, right? And then ChatGPT, by contrast, whether we like it or not, can scale instantly. All right, I'm glad you brought up infrastructure because actually that's one of OpenAI's biggest problems right now. So OpenAI is spending hundreds of billion dollars to build infrastructure, which is data centers. So it's a huge limitation on their business, which is why they're courting President Trump. They got the $500 billion Stargate investment. Actually, it's their biggest problem. So it's not that they can just achieve everything they want right now. And the more resources they have, they think, the current thinking with scaling laws is that the better it'll be. But at the same time, Waymo is learning constantly as well. So the cars are getting better and better and better. And you talk about stickiness, but people who use Waymos absolutely love them. And they're getting more capabilities every day. Like just today, they now can go on freeways. So now they're just as fast as an Uber in those cities. I just think in the long run, 100 years from now, I feel like we're gonna have a lot more autonomous cars. Then we will have people using chat chatbots in general or ChatGPT specifically? I just, maybe we'll be using AI or the like the core of ChatGPT's tech, but like the current ChatGPT product as it exists today, it just might morph and change. So I don't know what it's gonna look like in a hundred years. Totally. I also see a future where you're in a Waymo talking to your ChatGPT. That's exactly what I was gonna say, Christiana. Imagine you're in a Waymo and you're actually on ChatGPT looking up recipes or something like that. <laughs> yeah, what if we're both right? What if I'm just an AI avatar and you're actually debating a computer? <laughs> I'm sick. The final round question is, what was one of the first movies to feature the general concept of AI, artificial intelligence? And furthermore, what year was it made? And if you've got a guess and you want to play along at home, feel free to write it down in the comments. Okay, let's start with Emily, what you got? So, I don't know if you can see this. I put Frankenstein, 1931. All right, go for it. What would you say, uh, CJ? Wizard of Oz, 1939. <laughs> All right, those were fantastic guesses, but the correct answer is the movie Metropolis, and it was made in 1927, so before both of your guesses. All right, and after the final tally, it turns out, Emily, you are the winner. How does it feel to win Goat Tech? Like a million dollars. Unfortunately, CJ, Christiana, you didn't win today. How are you feeling right now? Devastated. Just my ego will never bounce back. That was a fabulous round. Thank you, Christiana. Thank you, Emily, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. That was awesome. Awesome. Well, that does it for today's episode. Wes, what'd you think? Oh, that was a great episode of Greatest of All Tech. Comment down below what you like about it, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, we have one final, final question for you guys. It's a comment that we got on our last video, and we would like you guys to guess who wrote this comment. I'm hearing the the biting nature of that compliment, and I think it was my mother. I think it was RFK Jr. Well, you were both wrong. It was actually Wes. Wes I, wrote that comment. I wrote it. On, on our own video that we're producing.